Hello, welcome to the Union Pacific Railroad Geneva subdivision. My name is Daryl Cruz. I'm the owner and builder of the layout. Uh, today I have a video uh, for you on weathering locomotives. Uh, a few years ago, uh, Floquil uh, stopped making enamel railroad colors um, in their paints, and I had used Floquil paints for uh, a lot of years uh, for, for weathering, and uh, they just simply stopped making the paint, and so um, I stopped weathering for for those years. Um, it's probably I'm not sure when exactly they stopped uh, making these paints, uh, but it's probably it's got to be at least five, maybe seven years. So I went all that time uh, without uh, weathering any uh, equipment. And of course, you know, over seven years or so, I bought a lot of equipment and kept adding uh, to the roster, um, but I didn't weather any of it because. I just couldn't get myself to make the move from uh, enamel paints to acrylic paints. I just didn't have any experience with it, and I uh, just didn't really want to, you know, start um, uh, working on it. Uh, so I kept putting it off and putting it off. And what happened is that uh, the layout got to the point where a bigger and bigger percentage of the uh, the freight cars and locomotives on the layout uh, were unweathered. Um, as compared to those that are weathered. So I finally got myself to sit down and, and try it with uh, um, uh, acrylic paints and I started, uh, started to get going on weathering. And what I've been using acrylic paint wise is the uh, Model Master acrylic paints. Um, I don't know if you can see this but uh, they're basically straight uh, acrylic paints and I've been using those, been experimenting with them, and finally got to you know where I knew what I was doing, and so I've been going whole hog on getting caught up on all the weathering. I've probably done about 60 freight cars, and um, probably be about uh, eight or nine locomotives, and I'm down to my last three locomotives. So I thought, well, before I do um, uh, the locomotives, I'd do a video on just what steps I take to uh, um, to weather the, lo the locomotives. Now one thing about uh, my weathering techniques is that I'm not trying to do a really detailed weathering uh, for uh, each car or locomotive um, because I have so many cars and such a large roster and I'm just a one-man operation. Uh, it's uh, important that I uh, have a way of doing it um, uh, fairly quickly and I basically do b batches at a time. I'll do like uh, eight to ten cars at a time, uh, three, or three to five uh, locomotives at a time and I uh, just basically try to do it so that it looks good and looks realistic um, but I don't spend a lot of time you know putting all the rust marks on or uh, try to um, replicate a specific car and all that kind of stuff I just basically want to take the, the glossy shine off the cars uh, give them a, a base weathering that shows the road uh, grime uh, from being on the tracks and then of course just an overall dusting of some kind of earth color uh, so let's go ahead and get started um, uh, I'm going to go over uh, weathering locomotives and there's a, a number of steps that I have here. I typed them up so I wouldn't forget uh, them. But here's basically the steps I go in weathering locomotives. Number one is remove the wheel sets. Uh, then I paint the handrails if they're caudal units, if they're uh, Fox Valley, they're already painted which is good. Uh, paint MU ho hoses, uh, paint the grills. Uh, a dark black, uh, a black color to in indicate the grime of the grills. I mask the windows. Um, I used to try to remove the the glass sets, um, but that was such a pain, and I ended up breaking a lot of them and just uh, getting them all scratched up and everything. So I uh, go to with uh, masking. I'm get get into that a little bit more in, in a bit. Um, once the windows are masked, then I weather the road grime on the trucks, fuel tank, and frame. Uh, I apply an overall light weathering, uh, then I remove the masking, replace the wheel sets, and we're all done. And again, I do at least three to five at a time, uh, so it goes a little bit faster. So I'm doing three this time, uh, two Cottle and one uh, Fox Valley. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's the three locomotives I'm going to be weathering. These are in their factory paint right now. We have a Fox Valley ES44AC. And then a couple of Cotto uh, AC4400s, I believe they are. Alright, I got these uh, Cottos. Believe it or not, I got them for $46 at 
Toy Train uh, Heaven. And I bought a bunch of them and renumbered them. And uh, these are the last ones I have to weather. All right, so these are the, these are the ones that we're going to do. As you can see, the Fox Valley here is um, already has the handrails painted and the MU hoses painted. Um, the coddles, we'll have to take care of that on those. All right, so this is what they look at, look like beforehand, and I'll, of course, take a shot of them when we're done uh, doing the weathering, and you can kind of compare the two. All right, so here we are uh, at my work table, and the first thing I'm going to do is remove the wheel sets. So I'm just going to go ahead and gently pry the trucks off. This is my holder for the parts. All right, put the two. All right, put the trucks. Three wheel wheel sets go in there, and the um, brass uh, pickup strips. And then we put the truck back on. All right, and then we do the same thing on this side. Comes off pretty easily. I like these older style Cotto trucks a lot better than the new ones. Uh, the newer ones, you have to take the shell off and split, uh, um, take the whole truck off. This is much easier. Just take the truck side frames off, and then we're good to go. All right, so now we're ready to uh, paint some um, handrails. As you can see, I do have the uh, wheel sets off of all the three engines. No problem. And now it's time to paint some handrails. I use this uh, Tamiya uh, paint. Um, it's designed for uh, race car models with flexible plastic, so they stick, it, the paint sticks pretty good. You can get like Model Flex. It's supposed to be even better, but this works fine for me. I don't really handle the locomotives that much, so I don't really have much trouble with uh, the paint chipping. Works out pretty good. So we'll start with that. And this is the uh, paintbrush I'll be using. And I just carefully... Oh, you know what? Before I start, though, one thing I do like to do... Hold on, I'm going to take a break. All right, I'm back. So one thing I like to do before I paint them is kind of remove the uh, the sanctions from where they're connected to the body shell there. It makes it less likely that we'll get some paint on the body shell. Right, like that. All right, so we'll go back to the paintbrush then. All right, so I just carefully... Uh, Take the paint and slowly and carefully go along the handrail, like that. I'm pretty good at this, but now that I'm videotaping it, I'm sure I won't be near as, as uh, efficient. There you go. Do this one right here. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's not real crucial that you get completely all sides of the handrail. Just get it along the outside there. Maybe kind of come along the back a little bit if if you need to. Just make sure you don't get any on the on the gray or yellow paint. Let's see here. Maybe a little more paint. If you can see, I did get some on the gray there. It's not the end of the world. Can uh, use some. Usually use a knife or something to kind of scrape it off. If I do get it a little mishap there. Okay, I will clean that up. That little spot there on the corner. Alright, but there you have 
the hand mill is painted. I'm going to get the underside here a little bit. Let's go ahead and get the back. I'm moving this engine around so that I can see. I hope it's not, I hope it can still be seen by the camera. Here we go, a little bit more. I had to admit a little bit of, got to scrape that off too. All right, but you get the idea. It doesn't take a lot of time, it goes pretty quickly. So I'll move on to the next one. All right, uh, next is to paint all the grills uh, black. I use the engine flat black by uh, the Model, Mas Model Masters uh, from Testers acrylic paint. And you can see I have a little bit here and I just put a, a bit in a in the in the cap, and then I add water, so that's about a 50/50 uh, mix. So it's a it's more of a wash than it is uh, painting. So if you just take some paint and we'll just f try to flow it into the grills like that. This is kind of nice if you do make a mistake and hit something that's not supposed to be painted, you can always go back and easily remove it. And we'll get some of these here. And then the paint, since it's a wash, flows down pretty easily into the crevices of the grill. So you don't actually have to use your brush to come in contact with every bit of it, every part of it. Just uh, kind of touch it. And it'll flow down to the rest of the grill. Right. Looks pretty good. You should try and make sure there's no. Uh... You can even go back if you notice I got off a little bit, so you can go in here and you can remove that without too much trouble. And if that doesn't work, you can always take a little napkin here or tissue and wipe off any excess that you don't want there. All right, and let's do some more over here. It doesn't show up on the gray as much. up for some reason. That's weird.
I think I may have uh, too much water in this paint. Let's do the top here. Do the top grills also. All right, so you get kind of the idea. I'm doing the grills. I think I'm going to go back. I think I got a little bit too much water. This is really not showing up very much. So I'm going to remix this. And uh, so let's go on. A, see if I can get a little bit better. Get it to show up on the gray a little bit better. But it shows up real nice on the yellow. May just go back and put a second coat on the on the gray. I think that's probably what I'll do. Doesn't take long; goes pretty quickly. But it is a pretty important part of weathering. Get the grills blacked out. Um, the locomotives, even when they just come out of the shop brand new the grills are almost immediately dark there you go all right i'll do the rest of these and then we'll move on to uh, masking windows All right, for uh, masking the windshield, I use this uh, micro scale micro mask liquid masking medium. And let's just go ahead and take this locomotive here. And yeah, we'll go ahead and get. I use a toothpick, but I cut the very tips of the toothpick off so that it's not too. Um, too pointy, it doesn't go on as well if it's real sharp. So I just cut the tip off so it's kind of flat on the ends. And you just put the liquid masking right into the windshield. There. If you happen to get a little bit outside the windshield, it's not that big of a deal. You can always. Uh, Go back with the other end of the toothpick and uh, wipe it off a little bit. Whoops. Try again. Get this side. Oops, that's too much. And then I go back with the other end of the toothpick and just wipe off any edges a little bit. Got the front pretty good. And it's all masked. Let that dry. And then when we weather it we can peel off the masking and we'll have nice clean windshields. Uh, we also need to do the MU hoses which I'll do right quick with some flat engine black. This is Model Masters Acrylic. Same paint I used for the uh, uh, the grills. But it's 
not 50-50 uh, this time, it's just straight out of the bottle. And there you have it. All masked, MU hoses painted. We'll let that dry and then we'll get to weathering. We are back and ready to uh, put our first uh, layer of weathering on. Uh, what we're going to uh, weather with this morning uh, is Ray Roll Tie Brown by Model Master. This has been diluted about 20% with water uh, just to get a little bit better flow. And uh, this color is chosen because if you look at photographs, the uh, color of the road grime on the engines pretty much matches the color of the grime on the rails. And so this is what I use to paint the track and rails. And so it's the same color I'm going to use for the uh, road grime on the engines. Works out pretty good. All right, so here we have uh, our first locomotive. And we're just going to just spray a little bit here very lightly on the truck's fuel tank and a frame of the locomotive. Try to not get any on the American flag and, and so forth. All right, so here we go. Very lightly applied. There you go. Not very much uh, on there, but you can see it's darkened a little bit. Um, Union Pacific uh, locomotives are um, pretty well maintained. Um, don't get a lot of weathering, so I always do very lightly weathering on my my locomotives. As you can see, I'm weathering my hand a little bit too. Should be wearing gloves, but uh, the airbrush I'm using is just a pash or pache, however it's pronounced. Um, it does have the uh, double action I can pull back to adjust the flow. Again, we're just kind of looking for a light coating, not trying to overdo it at all. I think that's pretty good. I've attached a new color. This is the uh, earth color and this basically just represents dust and accumulation of dirt on the overall exterior of the locomotive. Um, I applied the road grind from uh, uh, upward direction from below and for this um, uh, earth color I'm going to go from the top. I just basically uh, dirt that's accumulated and kind of
That's it. Get the other two. Back a little bit. Last one. Last one. You notice I'm handling it after I just painted it, but it dries pretty quickly as long as I'm light with it. Looks out pretty good. This one's a little shiny on the bottom there. I'm not sure. I think I'll just I think it's good though. Sometimes if you try to overdo it, this one's pretty even. If you try to overdo it then end up making it worse. That one's good. That one looks pretty good. All right, so I'll let that dry fully, and then I'll take the uh, micro mask off the windows and wash my hands. All right, just about the last step of the process is to remove the uh, masking from the windows. Um, the important thing to keep in mind for this step is uh, not to scratch the windows. Uh, so when I use uh, my knife to uh, cut the masking off, going to stay always on the edges here not do anything in the middle just always cut around the edges and uh, see if we can get the masking to come off so And it doesn't take long and masking comes right off. Alright, so I have to do that with all the windows. And then we'll be ready to put the wheels back on and uh, put it back on the track. The completed units are back on the track. They've had their wheels uh, reinserted. And you can see now a contrast between how they looked at the start and now how they look weathered. Definitely adds a touch of realism to the layout. Especially when they're pulling a string of weathered uh, freight cars too. Next up is going to be a bunch of tank cars. I have two uh, crude oil tank car train sets. Total of 57 cars. Uh, these are BLMA tank cars, and I'm going to give them a real light weathering. Um, so I only have 57 to do, but if I do my batches of 9 or so, that's not going to be too bad. Get them done in a little bit of time. As I do them, I will do a video on uh, how I weather uh, cars. A little bit different than locomotives. And uh, be looking forward to that, hopefully in the next couple weeks. Until then, have fun running and weathering trains.